Hi, and welcome back to the seventh video of the Hibernate video tutorial series by Lokam Chanikya. In the last tutorial, we talked about how to create the persistence classes, and then in the next tutorial, we talked about the Hibernate configuration file. In this tutorial, we'll start writing our functions, and in this particular tutorial, we'll be writing a function to get the configuration classes set. In this, we'll be using the configuration class, we'll be using the session factory class, as well as a session and transaction class. This base method will be used in all the CRUD operations to start off their sessions and transactions, which will be later used to actually perform some of the CRUD operations. So let's go over to our Hibernate Operations demo, class, demo project, go into source, into com.hibernate.demo, and open up the CRUD operations.java. As of now, there are no, no LF variables or methods present. For starters, let's create the configuration classes that we need. First one will be configuration. And you can see you can select from org.hibernate.cfg or many other options. Let's select org.hibernate.cfg because we're using the configuration class to hibernate. Let's call the object as config. The next step would be to add a session factory also from org.hibernate and call it as factory. And next, we create another global variable called session. And also create a transaction variable called tx. All of these are global variables and can be used by us in any other particular in any other particular methods that we create in this particular class. The next step would be to add a get config method. The get config method doesn't return anything. But basically, it sets the values of all these objects and instantiates them. It instantiates the config object with the configuration of the hibernate.cfg.xml class and also creates a session factory from which we can create sessions as well as current transactions. For this, let's create public void get config method. This doesn't take any parameters because we already have all the configurations set into the XML file. The first step would be to add a try catch block catch any exceptions or we can just leave them out and let the method that calls these particular get config method to handle the try try and the catch methods. First step would be to create a configuration which is config equal to new configuration dot for this we now need to add an annotated class. But in order to add the annotated class, we have to make this an annotation configuration, which is not which it's not at present. So just as changes create an annotation configuration, because we're using the annotated class. So for this, we now have the add annotated class method, in which we add the annotated class, which which in our case is persistence class dot class. The next step would be to call the configure method which actually configures this particular annotated class along with the XML file that is hibernate.cfg.xml. We can leave it like this or we can actually give the configuration class inside over here like hibernate.cfg.xml. But in our case let's just leave it out. The next step would be to create the session factory. Seems like we have an error over here. Let's check it out. Oh, there's just an extra bracket. Let's remove that extra bracket, come back down, and take the factory class. We create the factory class directly from the config class using the config dot build session factory method. This session factory method build session factory method creates a factory for us. Now using this factory, we can now create our sessions. Session dot session equal to factory dot open session. Now that we have our session object, we can now, which is stored into a global session object, we can then use this session object to actually create transactions during our CRUD operations and then actually close the sessions or commit the transactions. We'll create the transactions in the next tutorial 
along with the insert statement in the next tutorial. We'll follow that up with retrieval, updation, and deletion, followed up by some other cool things in Hibernate, such as native SQL queries, Hibernate query language, as well as criteria. Thank you for watching our tutorials, and we hope to have you back. Please subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Thank you.